The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. Hi, I'm Karen Signorachi. For over 20 years, I've devoted my career to helping nonprofits reach their goals, increase their funding, broaden their donor base, and their community outreach. In addition, I've worked with my nonprofit clients to get the right people around the table to serve and execute the mission of the organization for its betterment and its service to the community. If you're considering starting a nonprofit, serve on a nonprofit board of directors, or are currently struggling to get your organization to the next level, please visit KarenSCS.com. That's KarenSCS.com. Let me know how I can help you increase your efficiency. One of the key components to a successful nonprofit are its board of directors. They are integral to the success by setting strategy, vision, and taking on fiduciary responsibility. Making key decisions is also part of this role. Please visit KarenSCS.com. That's KarenSCS.com. And let's speak about making your nonprofit and your vision. Hello, hello, and welcome. This is The Big Picture on 103.9 Long Island News Radio. I am your host, Karen Signorachi, and I've spent the last 20 years working with nonprofits on building nonprofit boards and raising money and, and community awareness. And my PSA every week and today especially is I, I hope you'll hear something that inspires you to go back to your own community, to your place of work, to your family and say, we want to get involved. We want to do something. There are so many nonprofits on Long Island, but beyond that, there's so much good work being done. So whatever news outlet you listen to, hopefully this is one of them, just put the negative on the wayside and focus on the positive. There's so much positive, so much great work being done right here in our backyard. And I hope you'll learn something and I hope you'll be inspired and I hope you think about what you can do, big or small, to make a difference. So today, I am thrilled to have two fierce, dynamic women with me. They are from United Cerebral Palsy of Long Island. We're going to call that UCPLI. And I have Camille Schramm and Colleen Crispino. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, You know how we start the big picture. We have to kind of just talk a little bit about food for a moment, (laughs) um, because who doesn't love food? A nice meal. And my question for both of you, Colleen first, have you made anything recently you care to share or have you eaten anywhere recently that was noteworthy? Well, I don't cook very often. Okay. Um, the first to tell us not that. really good at it, but um, I did recently go, and I'm shocked I'd never been there before, to the fifth season in Port Jeff. Ooh. If you have not been there, the food is amazing. I would highly recommend it. That's good to know. And Colleen did something else we like here. We talked about a small business, a local business right here on Long Island. That's a good thing. The fifth season, Port Jeff. Okay, Camille. All right. So I love to cook. Mm -hmm. I love to bake. And recently, actually last weekend, my husband's office decided to host a potluck luncheon. And I was asked to make something that was kind of a family special. So I chose my rice pudding. And sent that in, and everybody loved it. There was, you know, some confusion about who was going to take the last bit of it home. And then the next morning, I was asked to give everybody in the office the recipe for it. Wow, Camille. Not only do you showcase your rice pudding, a family recipe, you are a team player. Because your husband needed you, you pitched in, you did it. That That's terrific. And and listen, a little sweet, a little at the end of the meal, always, always good too, right? All good things. Okay, so now let's get to the good stuff. We're going to talk about UCPLI. Tell us more, Colleen, about the organization. Sure. Um, We are a full-service organization for children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Obviously, we serve um, people with cerebral palsy, but we also serve people with autism, epilepsy, intellectual impairments, and pretty much the broad spectrum of developmental disabilities. So we serve basically from birth through end of life, both in school programs, residential programs, um, day programs, recreation, and basically our goal and vision is just to support people with disabilities, to be included in their communities, to be happy and productive and living their best possible life. I I read over your mission statement and you use some amazing words like 
productivity Mm -hmm. and full citizenship. And it is not just those affected by cerebral palsy, but other disabilities to live this life that the disability is secondary. Is that, is that what you're finding? Absolutely. And it's not always easy. You know, society is not always quick to accept people that are not exactly like them. Um, so we try to find the ways that, you know, bring people together with either similar interests or skills. So whether it's through our art programs or through employment for people with disabilities, which is a great um, way to break down barriers when you have coworkers that have disabilities. It's a great way for people to understand that people with disabilities come to work and other places with skills and abilities that may be different, but are definitely adding to the, to the overall environment and community. We're going to, we're going to come back to art because that's important. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come back to that topic. But, um, my question for both of you is how so many people (laughs) find this like not direct route, circuitous route to the nonprofit world. Um, can you both tell me how you got to the nonprofit world? And, and we're and if, for those of that, this is radio, but we're laughing and smiling here, so you know this is going to be good. Should I start? Sure. Yes, <clears throat> tell us. Okay, so I actually came to the agency as a past business supporter. Worked for a very large financial institution and um, was invited to purchase a table at their gala. And the evening of the gala, I attended, and I was bidding on some of the artwork that we featured, and um, ran into an old friend from my childhood, back from my Brooklyn days. And that old friend and his wife were the board president. We had gone to school together. And the next morning after the event, I kind of reached out to his wife and said, okay, this was amazing. How do I get involved? And she said, well, there was a committee that we host a fundraising committee. Would you be interested in joining? So that was my segue into, into getting more involved with UCPLI. So you, you sat on the side at one point where you were maybe finding organizations to support. Yes. And now you're on the other side. Absolutely. And, and what's been the one common denominator that you find in, in both areas? You know, I think when you enter the nonprofit world from the business sector, you have a different appreciation of how you can support them. And it just, um, you know, today I actually put my head on the pillow and know that I do some something good and help somebody else. It's, it's a really gratifying feeling. It is. It is. And, and, and you have these octopus arms that can go out to so many different people that you get to touch through committees, through volunteering, through raising money, all, all, all of those things. Colleen, how about you? So mine was a little bit straighter, but not exactly. So I always knew I wanted to be in a helping profession. When I went to college, I thought I was going to go to medical school and become a doctor, which after being in school, I decided was not the path for me. And I kind of um, had a summer job at an East End agency as a direct service professional Mm -hmm. and really found that I loved it. So I ended up finding... Um, rehabilitation counseling, which was a major at my college. And I ended up getting my bachelor's and my master's and ended up in, um, you know, a disability organization and have had pretty much every position you could probably have. So it's a great message for people out there looking for Mm -hmm. careers. There's a great way to start at the bottom and really learn so many things. And like Camille said, knowing that you're doing something great that's giving back to other people. But also creating a career that really works for you. So I've been I've been very blessed to have found this way. So when you started as a direct support professional, you were hands-on working with mm-hmm. an individual or a group? In a group home. Group I worked home. in a group home, yeah. And, and you got to see firsthand experience of working with some individuals, maybe interacting with their families. Mm-hmm. And now as, as the leader of the organization, you get to set strategy and, and be part of the big picture, which kind of ties us back to, you know, the exactly. name of the show. I like it. Um, but tell us when there was a moment for you now in your current role where like it all clicked, where you're like, oh, wow, and it's all coming together. <laughs> well, I feel like that happens um, on a lot of days. But for me, I started specifically, I've been in the field for 30 plus years, but I started at UCP in May of 2020. So it was during the mm-hmm. pandemic, the height of the pandemic. And I didn't get to meet anybody or see anybody or, you know, we were all staying far away from each other, especially from program participants and our residents, because we didn't want to get anybody sick. And, you know, we were staying far away. So I feel like this year, we're finally um, 
you know, having committee meetings and, and we do round tables with our staff and I go to visit all the homes and I really feel like we're creating, you know, kind of a, a culture where we're all in this together. Um, and I think this year we're finally starting to feel that, that strategy of trying to build a community that everybody's a part of, that things are transparent, that people understand, and it's finally coming to fruition. And it's amazing because none of us would have thought that would have been the road. You know, it, it, and, and it's 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 amazing how much COVID did impact a lot of different areas, but it comes back to basics: people, community, trust, getting involved. So we're going to talk more about. Just give us the website of the organization too. Sure, it's www.ucp-li.org. Well, you can learn more there, and we'll be right back with with UCPLI to talk about um, what they're doing right here on Long Island. Welcome back. This is the big picture on 103.9 Long Island News Radio. I am here with Camille Schramm and Colleen Crispino. We are talking about UCP Long Island, that's United Cerebral Palsy of Long Island, and their mission is to advance the independence, productivity, and full citizenship of people with cerebral palsy and other disabilities. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the real uh, meat and, and work that they're doing um, Colleen, tell us a little about how someone listening, maybe even in the business community, could get involved and what you'd want them to know. Absolutely. So, you know, the business community comes to us as volunteers, as donors, which is wonderful and we need that. But the other place that we need our business leaders is to start thinking about people with disabilities, all types of disabilities, not just intellectual and developmental disabilities, as potential employees. We have people that have lots of skills, have had lots of training. We have a very um, robust employment program. So we help support both the employer and the employee um, when they're starting work and even after they've been employed. So if there's questions about accommodations, how to, how to have different equipment that might help someone, how to make a space physically accessible, those are all things that we can support an employer so that they can actually successfully hire somebody with a disability into their community. And I'm going to tell you that our employers um, often tell us that they are their best employees, they, mm. they are truly integrated into their workplaces, that they're dependable, um, and we really do strive to make good connections so people are really well suited for the job. So if people are out there looking, as I know as an employer, we are always looking and we do hire people with disabilities. If you're looking, definitely reach out to UCPLI or any number of disability organizations that support people um, in employment endeavors because you are missing a very critical piece of the workforce if you're not looking there. So you hit on a lot of key components, but if, if I hear what you're saying correctly, not only are you preparing some of um, the individuals for employment, you could also help an employer get themselves situated to accommodate that person appropriately. Absolutely. And so you're a world of resource, a, a world of knowledge definitely, for potential um, employers. And for, for those individuals, they're getting this boost of confidence. They probably come in with a smile. They're getting a, a paycheck. Is that correct? Yep. And that helps them in their own inside, in their confidence, all of those things. Um, are there any specific areas that you would mention, um, any specific um particular employers you'd be looking for, or is it vary? I think it really varies. We have people that work from the fast food industry through the financial industry. Um, it really, it depends on the individual and their, and their skill set. Some people may have degrees. Other people may have technical training. Other people may not. They may be looking for more entry-level jobs. So I think it's pretty, a pretty wide range. That's terrific. That's terrific. So the other thing we're going to just, just touch on here is art is so important. Art therapy, um, and, and this crosses all nonprofits. It crosses, you know, work with the Alzheimer's patients. It crosses, you know, people with the, the development disabilities. Tell us how art, Camille, is infused into the organization and maybe something that you would like people to know as well. Sure. So our art program actually started about um, 15 years ago, and it was really to help people with disabilities to stretch their muscles. 
And it's today it's turned into this full blown program where our individuals are creating these one of kind pieces of artwork that we showcase at special events. Um, this month, actually at the Long Island Museum, 24 of our artists are being celebrated with a curated art exhibit that's open to the public. So we're pretty excited about that. How many people can say that they have art in a museum? Um, so hopefully you'll be able to come down. It's open from June 1st through the 25th, and we hope that you'll support UCPLI and the Long Island Museum. Wow, and, and, and that art, is, it's, it's expressive? It absolutely is expressive. Um, we, they use everyday type of materials, hmm. um, things that you would not necessarily think that would go into artwork. So some of our individuals are very limited with their muscles, and um, we have a wonderful recreations director and her staff. They turn every th everyday materials like Q-tips and combs into pieces of um, or materials that they can use to develop their skills. And it's it's wonderful to see the artists actually create these pieces because they are truly beautiful pieces of art. And they infuse these materials and color, and and I'm sure you look at some of it and think, wow what capabilities all of us have with art, because we can all do it, but when they're guided with the right professionals, how amazing is that work? Tell us the museum again, Camille. Long Island Museum in Stony Brook. In Stony Brook. Okay. All right. That's great information. Now, people can go check out the art throughout the whole month of June. Correct. But if there's something else this summer people want to get involved in, um, what would you have to share about that? So we actually have a fundraiser that's coming up in July at Dublin Deck with our Young Professionals Committee. Um, it is a cornhole tournament. Oh, wow. So this is the second year we're actually hosting the event, and we have quite a bit of interest in it. Who doesn't like to enjoy some of... Um, you know, some of the, what the East End has to offer, sure. you know, um, full barbecue, a professionally run cornhole tournament and, um, open bar. So it's great. And you can do all of this while supporting UCP of Long Island. And that's on July 12th. July 12th. Now, what I find interesting about this, just to divert for a minute, I, I love when nonprofits are doing something unique and something different. And listen, we love a nice golf outing on a beautiful day and, and, a, and a beautiful gala that recognizes the mission, but cornhole it's different, and it stands out. And you could get people involved after work. They can come down. They can come down with their, their team. They can mm -hmm. come down with their neighbors. You can make any, any mix of it happen. Um, and, that, and the website again, Camille, just so everybody has it? www.ucp-li.org. That's great. And, and again, something different, something that stands out. And, and people can learn about the organization, learn about the mission, and maybe go to the next step and get involved in, an, in another way. Um, aside from the art and, and the, the uh, vocational training, um, are there other areas that stand out or other partnerships that the organization has that you feel are, are, are noteworthy? So, yes. So we are launching this summer, actually, a partnership with Newground, which is another local non-for-profit on Long Island that handles um, breaking the cycle of homelessness for our veterans. So we are doing a food drive. June through August to help support that ag agency. And New Ground is also going to be a guest on the big picture in July, um, and they do great work. And the beautiful thing about UCPLI and New Ground is now you have a relationship. You're, you're working together collaboratively. And on, on the other end, funders love to see that. They love to see nonprofits working together. And they also love to see um, you know camaraderie. Um, we are competing in some ways for the philanthropic dollar and maybe even for time. But, um, but at the same token, there's, there's great partnership. Um, have you found, you know, in, in, your, in your travels, you know, both of you, that um, there's something, where's the, the emotional connection that, that people develop? Um, is, it, is it through a specific program? Is it through individuals? You know, what do you find um, people resonate with, with your mission? Um, I think it depends. I think if you come to a program, you take a tour, that's probably the best way, whether you come to our children's center and you see, you know, our children who may not have been able to walk when they were smaller, who are now walking down the hall using a walker or a gait trainer. Um, or if you come to our day program and you see the amazing artwork and music that goes on, you know, you, you'll really understand that 
all people have something to give to you and you have something to give to them. So I think touring and coming to see our programs, which we are always open to, you can reach out to Camille or myself and come and visit us, but getting to really know people is how, you know, is how we get it done really, because if you experience someone with a disability in a really positive way, it could change your whole mindset about people who, who may not look and talk and sound like you. It can change your mindset and you could bring that information back again to your home, to your place of business, to your community. You both said so many great things today and what you do every day is, is admirable. Um, you're both just wonderful women, but I, I have to say, Clay, I love the last thing you said about people coming for a tour because they see the mission in action. They see the work right there. And, and that speaks volumes. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for thank having you. us. One last time, Colleen, the website for UCPLI. www.ucp-li.org. Okay. And all this will be linked back on my website. This is the big picture on 103.9 Long Island News Radio. Thank you for being here. And we are grateful for, for the work of UCPLI right here on Long Island. <laughs> The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting, Mass.